Hello and welcome to Hazmat IQ's Chemical of the Month series. This is a monthly service designed to help keep former learners HMIQ's skills sharp. This is for no November 2009 Chemical of the Month. You can now find these Chemical of the Month features at the YouTube website. Just type in the keyword HMIQ. You can also find it at the Hazmat IQ website, which is www.hazmatiq.com. Our scenario today is this. A pungent smell was reported nearby an over-the-road tanker in a truck stop by a busy interstate highway. A few people who walked downwind of the tanker were stricken with coughing episodes. The driver has not been located, and the only marking on the front of the truck is a DOT Corosa placard. The weather conditions for this scenario are 68 degrees Fahrenheit. The wind is slight and variable, and the wind direction is from the back of the truck toward the front of the truck. Get your smart charts out. Are you ready? At this point, this is an unknown response. And the mission is to look for victims, number one, and number two, to determine if there is a leak. Remember the red light indicators on your smart charts. For this scenario, responders chose to enter in SFPC, structural fire protective clothing, or turnouts, along with SEBA, in order to gain more information. They segregated the whole area for 300 feet in all directions due to a possible gas cloud as indicated by the coughing of bystanders. Also, they're responding with the red light indicators in mind. Based on monitoring instrument data, they're going to make decisions on whether they should stay or leave the area. The monitors or meters that they're going to take in with them are the radiation meter or the rad meter for a quick check on radiation uh, that might be in the area. Also, they're going to use indicator paper, which is the F paper and PH paper, as heads-up displays on the front of their SCBA face pieces. They will also take in a temperature gun to indicate any uh, leaks because of, of cold temperatures or even any reactions because of heat. And then also they take in a combustible gas indicator or a CGI to check for flammability. In this case, the instrument they use today is a combination meter, which is a quad gas monitor, which uh, measures flammable gases, oxygen, hydrogen sulfide, and carbon monoxide. And then it also is combined with a PID, a photoionization detector. Being an unknown response, we're going to follow the smart chart number five. This is an unknown response algorithm or protocol. Again, what we want to do is enter the site with meters and SFPC and SCBA for safety. We're going to be keeping in mind the red light indicators, which is part of the step number one for the unknown algorithm. What the red light indicators tell us is that if our meters indicate a certain level of contaminant or danger, then we need to stop and withdraw from the scene. It's just too dangerous to proceed at that point. Our second step in this process for unknowns would be obviously to uh, enter the site with the correct protective equipment on and the correct meters. Step number three of the unknown protocol is once we get some information or some intelligence, we can make some uh, determinations based on our research. We can do the verification of uh, information and then also some more in-depth information to make sure that we're on track. And then finally, step four of the unknown algorithm or protocol is to make decisions based on what our mission is. If it's a rescue mission or an intelligence, intelligence gathering or a reconnaissance mission, that's one thing. Or it may be a plumbing mission where we do uh, Enter entry into the scene to do the plumbing to stop the leaks and we do that with the correct protective equipment on. So this is all found on smart chart number five. For our entry today we're going to make a, a pre-entry check. Make sure that we have all of our meters. You see the meters are all in this basket which is a well ventilated basket with uh, slits so the atmosphere can get to the meters. We also have correct PPE on. 
uh, our turnout gear and SCBA on air. We also have the heads up displays on our partner here. And what we're going to do is put the H or F paper on the left hand side of the responder. So when they look at it, they can look for an in indication changes. Left is for life, and that's the paper we'll look at for that. The right is for red, which uh, indicates acid environments for pH. It could also turn blue depending on a caustic environment. So that's what we have taped to the face piece of this responder. So we want to watch for the paper for any color changes because these indicate red light indicators. Also we'll be keeping attention with our air supply. So on your own face piece you're going to have the pink paper which is the F paper on the left hand side left for life. Again, we'll be looking for any changes for yellow, which indicates fluorine atom presence. On the right-hand side of your, your face piece, you'll be looking at the pH paper. And if that turns red or blue, those would be indicators to leave the scene, red light indicators. So our entry is from the downwind side of the hot zone. We're going to come in from the 300-foot uh, area and proceed toward the vehicle to uh, try to find any clues. We'll be checking our meters the whole time and also make maintain our situational awareness of what's going on. At this point, there's nothing on the meters. Our heads-up display has not indicated any changes at all. And we have no radiation other than background, nothing on the CGI or the other meters on that combination meter. There's also nothing on the pit at this point. Our temperature gun does indicate that the engine is, is warm and the truck is not running. It is shut off. We also have an indication that it's a corrosive placard. It's an MC-312 tanker, and there is no one inside, and the cab is locked. So this still remains for us a green light situation. We're going to proceed around the side to see what other information we can attain. On the side, moving down the side of the corrosive carrier, we'd have no meter changes. We do not see any victims in the area or any indication of a release. We do see that there is a corrosive placard on the side along with a poison placard and a United Nations number of 1052. Again, our meters do not indicate any changes at all at this point. But this is a, a yellow light situation because we have something more than we had earlier. We have the poison placard and now we have a UN number. We're going to radio this information back to our hazmat team director or our branch leader and ask for direction. We'll stand by and, and wait until we get more information. That helps a little bit, getting a little bit better vision, and that helps a lot more.